أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I seek refuge in God from Satan the accursed in the name of God the beneficent and the merciful I offer my respects to the Holy Promised Savior, the 12th Shia leader, Imam al-Mahdi, may God hasten his advent. I pray for the special attentions of this holy Imam to all of us, especially during this month and the upcoming month of Ramadan. And I also implore to the Almighty God for the reappearance, for the hasty reappearance of the Holy Imam, because in his reappearance lies the prosperity of all humankind in this world and in the hereafter. With respect to the month of Ramadan, there are many legacies left from the holy Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. One of them is the Sahih ibn Hishamis, which is a tradition from the Imam Sadiq. It is a very brief sentence, but a very eloquent one. It has very deep meanings. The Imam said, when the month of Ramadan arrives, the year arrives. When the month of Ramadan is perfect, the entire year is perfect. the idea behind uh, having a perfect month of Ramadan is for human beings to have to spend this month in a perfect way. We are given the power of intellect which is supported by the messengers and the holy infallibles. However, there is on the other hand the impulsive soul which commands the human beings to do evil things. It also includes the desires, the lusts, anger, rage, wrath. And human beings swing between these two powers, the intellect and the impulsive soul. 
انسان على نفسه بصيره each and every person is aware of his soul این شهوات آتش زننده را در قلب we all are invested with the power of intellect on one hand and also the power of desires the fiery desires in ourselves This hadith, it rests the people, not the month. So when we say that the month of Ramadan is perfect, it means that people should be perfect in this month. Imam Ali said to the Prophet before this month, Is this about having my faith intact? So it is about spending a very perfect and healthy time in the month of Ramadan. If we can accomplish this, then we will have a healthy and perfect 11 months that follow. On the other hand, it is a word of encouragement by Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him. If you can manage to suppress your desires and restrain them for one, for one month, he would get the hold of his desires. Otherwise, he will be the slave of his desires. The month of Ramadan is a critical moment. It is a, an introductory. It is the spring. It is the spring and the right time for praying, for doing salat, for doing acts of worship, for making pilgrimage to the holy infallibles. And all of these acts are the necessary elements for having a perfect month. Abu Hanifa said to Imam Qadim, who was still a young person, the Imam, he asked if the sinner commits a sin, is it determinism or free will? So if, the, if the, it is the case of determinism, why is God punishing human beings? Because he is not to be blamed. And if it is the free will, why God cannot hold the servants back? Imam Qadim answered, it is the human beings to be blamed. However, God destined for human beings to have free will, to be free, so that it becomes clear who sins and who doesn't. And it is us who should work hard to 
make a perfect month. There's also another tradition which says, where is your dedication? Imam Qadim said that we need a strong dedication. We all can have this strong dedication. We need to make sure that this month of Ramadan is a perfect month for all of us. Each believing man or woman, each young person, young boys and girls, as much as they have powers, and God has given powers to everyone, and God doesn't require people to do more than their power, but everyone should do as much as they can to make this month a perfect one. Everyone should try to realize this hadith, to make this happen, to perfect this month. Make a strong resolution to do what is good, and we all know what is good. Even if these good works are difficult to be done, most of the time it is difficult. And actually, you know, the trials and tests come for difficult jobs. Never in the exams at the university level, questions, simple questions are asked. But for first graders, simple questions should be asked because they are elementary. Almighty God chose his messengers himself. However, they were chosen by the Almighty God, they represented the Almighty God in this world, even though they were chosen by God, God Almighty still continued to give trials and tests to the messengers. The best of all creation, the greatest master of all infallibility, the greatest position of infallibility is given to the 14 infallibles by Almighty God. The Prophet passed many difficult trials. To mention one of those examples, one of those trials, the Prophet had to deal with his relatives who were mostly against the message and the mission of the Prophet of Islam. The Prophet was very compassionate to the pagans. He did not even punish the the spies, the pagan spies, they actually revealed information, military information of the Muslims to the enemies. However, the Prophet, due to his merciful heart, did not punish him. The pagans used to pelt stones at the Prophet of Islam. The Prophet used to bleed from head to toe. However, the Prophet never cursed them, never asked God to 
put a curse on them. On the contrary, the Prophet prayed for the guidance of his nation. And Almighty God gave the most excruciating and difficult trials to this person, to the Prophet of Islam. It is said that the Prophet of Islam had nine uncles, six of whom died while they were pagans, them and all their progeny. One of them is Abu Lahab, who is a very infamous person. This was surely very difficult for the Prophet to handle this. The Prophet was very compassionate to these strangers. So you can just imagine how hard it was for the Prophet to see his relatives, his uncles, die as pagans. Three of the Prophet's aunts were also pagans. You and I, if one of our relatives is misled, we just feel pity for them. Most of the Prophet's relatives were pagans. Not only that, but they also worked against the Prophet, worked against Islam and the Islamic faith. This great examination and trial by Almighty God requires a very great and strong dedication. People have problems in their homes, children with their parents, parents with their children, brothers, sisters, siblings. The preachers have issues in their mission of preaching Islam. You all should make a strong resolution. I have said this repeatedly. You all should study the history of the Holy Prophet of Islam and see for yourself how much the Prophet of Islam suffered in his mission. A couple of years ago, some managers of a Husseiniya, they had an issue, a financial issue. They tried to collect some money, but they could not raise enough money, so they came to me. They are very good and faithful people. One of them told me, he said that I have done a lot of things to promote religion. He said that he hopes that God has accepted his efforts, otherwise he has done enough because he was humiliated by many people. He was disappointed. I said to the old man, to that person, to that manager of Hosseiniya, have you ever been thrown, at, thrown out of a place? Have you been, have you been uh, disrespected, insulted? He said, no. Then I said, the Prophet of Islam, who is the greatest of all humankind, and we all wish to be the servants of this great character. He has gone through all of these things. During his mission, the Prophet of Islam, during his 13 years of preaching Islam, even during the time the Prophet was in uh, the Sheb Abi Talib, the valley of Abi Talib, the pagans used to come to Mecca 
to worship their idols because you know Mecca was filled with idols and each tribe had their own idols idols were made from stones and cloth and everything The Prophet used to go and sit with those people, with those pagans and idolaters. They threw the Prophet out of their gatherings. But never the Prophet said to God, Oh God, stop this. He was never disappointed. He continued his mission years after years. Pagans used to visit Kaaba and Mecca two times a year. The Hajj pilgrimage was customary even at the time of Adam and Eve. Some of those pagans were spat at the Prophet of Islam. But the Prophet never complained to God Almighty. He was the greatest of all humankind. We are nothing compared to him. It is a pity. We should not just give up. We should stand all the problems. We should not be disappointed. This is how the world works. If we just give up, it is a disrespect to ourselves. Self-development, this is the gist of it. This is what makes this month perfect. We need a strong resolution and dedication. And we should know that it is very difficult. Success comes after hardship. No one's success is valued if it is attained and achieved easily. If we are going to face the Prophet of Islam and Lady Fatima Zahra on the Day of Judgment, as you know, the Prophet is the authority and the ruler in the world, in the afterlife. He is the one who gives rules in the afterlife. So when we are going to meet the Prophet of Islam in the afterlife, we cannot talk about what we ate, what we wore, and how we lived, because the Prophet is not going to be happy with these things. We should not bring our familial problems and issues to the Prophet. We need to be patient in the face of all these hardships and remain steadfast. We should not give up our mission. No one can defeat us, no one can make us let down and give up. It is us who make this decision. If we just do not give up, we can continue despite all the odds. Oh, 
If we stand resolute and steadfast, we can continue up until the end. And the key is making a perfect month of Ramadan. And it all is dependent on the resolution and dedication that we develop. As much as you are serious in this job, God Almighty will help you as well. The Holy Imam Mahdi has given a promise to support us. We all will die eventually. You know, even if we are a good person and do our job in this world, in the afterlife we will see that there are a lot of more people who are ahead of us, who, are, who stand in a higher grade and degree. Patience and clemency are the two key elements for any preacher. In the path of preaching, you were insulted, you were imprisoned or beaten. This is what happened to the Prophet of Islam most of the time. In Holy Mecca, the Prophet was beaten. Someone kicked the Prophet and stopped the Prophet from praying. Sometimes we have no choice and we remain patient. But even if we had a choice, if we could retaliate, we must remain steadfast and not answer back. And this is called clemency. For example, if someone swore at you and you could answer back, you should refrain from doing this. And this is, and this is called clemency. If someone is treating you bad for a long time, for your whole life, and suddenly you can just retaliate, you should avoid doing this. You should develop this spirit in yourself during the month of Ramadan. Some Iraqi military commander had visited me a couple of days ago. I gave him two advices. I said to him that this power that is given to you will be taken from you one day. First, my first advice to him was that never oppress anyone. Never oppress anyone. Make a resolution not to oppress anyone. Otherwise, you will be defeated. The second advice was, you, he should, I told him to support the oppressed people as much as they can. To make this happen, you should develop yourself and develop this spirit in yourself during the month of Ramadan. You should not be among those people who can give, guide others to the right path, but they themselves are misled. They preach the good works, but they do not do the good works themselves. The dear preachers should think of this, should give this a think. I always myself think about it. 
All those preachers who perform the act of preaching during the month of Ramadan, you should think of the fact that some of those people whom you are preaching Islam to will do better than you in the afterlife. They will surpass you. God has concealed his favorite servants among people. I myself I myself remind myself remind myself of this reality every day. I know that the words I say the words I say will affect some people and they will finally surpass me in faith and dedication. God has concealed his favorite servants among masses of people. There are many examples in the holy traditions. This month is the best time, is the ripe time for self-development. Of course, the entire year is good for the self-development, but this month is the best time. You should purify your souls to perform what is obligatory and to refrain from doing what is haram. Purifying your souls is, a, is an obligatory deed, just like the prayers, like the salat. So how can one purify his soul? One part of it is developing a strong dedication, as Imam Qadim said. You should not waste your time in the disputes that have no results. Many people have wasted their time in such futile disputes. Even if you are accused, you should not mind this. If it is an obligatory deed to clarify on that accusation, you should do, but most of, most of the time it is not the case. You should not defend yourself. If it was needed and required for a greater good, you should do this, but most of the time it is not the case. Someone told me that said that he was once said something. Someone was very obsessed with what was told him as an accusation and he wanted to answer back. This is not how we should live. We should not be obsessed with the love of this world, with the love of fame and reputation. We should rely on our intellect and the orders and the commands of the Holy Quran and the Holy Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. If we can make this month, the Ramadan month, perfect, we can have a, a perfect time during the rest of the year. We should keep in mind that some of our audiences in our preaching missionaries will sometimes surpass us. And on the afterlife, we should not be so much regretful. And to do that, we must be very dedicated in this world. Another issue, it is a collective religious duty. And since the job, this duty is not fulfilled in Islamic countries, it is not even fulfilled in the holy cities. 
and it is a religious obligation imagine that there are a thousand people sinking in the water and it is obligatory to all of you to save each and every one of them but we cannot we should do as much as we can we should save as many people as we can we should prioritize our responsibilities and religious obligations. We should defend the Almighty God and this is a, an obligatory duty. We should defend the Holy Quran and the Prophet of Islam. We should defend the late Lady Fatima Zahra and the Holy Infallibles, Imam Ali, Imam Mahdi, may God hasten his advent. It is the responsibility of everyone. We should clarify their views and stances. We should connect to people who write books against God, those people who speak ill of the Holy Prophet and the infallibles and Islam. We must equip ourselves with the talent and skills to confront these ideas and then we must perform this obligation that is to defend God, Islam and the Prophet of Islam and the infallibles. Almighty God is so strict about the laws and it says in Holy Quran, God says in Holy Quran that if the Prophet deviates from the laws of God he will cut his throat of course the Prophet will never deviate from the God's laws but this is how strict these laws are in the sight of God however we have as much as 500 verses about the laws and Islamic rulings and there are more uh, verses which are dedicated to stories but God uses so many verses to tell stories to people sometimes stories make changes to people because sometimes these stories are more effective on people we should know what stories to say and how to say them I have received many magazines and books and writings these writings cast the most disrespectful accusations and insults against the Prophet of Islam 
who is responsible to defend the Prophet of Islam against these accusations. In the early times of Islam in Mecca, the Muslims could not def defend the Prophet of Islam and protect his holiness. But today we can. We have this power, more or less, of course. We should try to educate the uncultured people. Although the enemies have thousands of media outlets and they actually are producing programs against the Prophet of Islam 24-7, they cast accusations and disrespectful remarks about Islam, the Almighty God, and the Prophet of Islam. We should do as much as we can. Maybe we have four or five satellite TV satellites. We should do our job and Almighty God will support us. The enemies usually influence the people who are uncultured and uneducated. We have the treasure of Quran. We are honored to have the Holy Quran. These are very logical and tangible issues that we can present to the world. So in defense of Almighty God, Holy Quran, and the Holy Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, particularly the Holy Prophet of Islam, We can use these logical arguments to defend the Prophet of Islam. Some uncultured people are easily influenced. In recent decades, I have been into this. The enemies do either of these two things. They either lie or they just use false arguments. We should only prove people that their arguments are false and wrong. In the past it was the same. People used to accuse the Prophet of being a crazy person, an insane person. They even accused the Prophet of being a magician. It is either lies or just false arguments. How can you disqualify? How can you just prove that a, an argument is false? To do this, we need to study. You need to study hard as, as hard as you can so that you can expose the false arguments of these enemies. In the entire history, the scholars of Jews, the Jewish scholars, the Christian scholars, the scholars from pagans, those scholars were guided to Islam. How were they guided? It is only through constructive and high arguments of Quran and just to expose their false arguments. In Iran's city of Urumiya, 200 years ago, there was this young person who was a Christian. It is said that he was the the bishop or the head of all churches in Oromia. He was, he was a priest at the age of 12 because he was so sharp and he was a prodigy. He was very clever. He was visited and tutored by great scholars, by great Christian scholars, and he was sent back to Orumia. He was still a teenager. 
and he was the leader of the Christian community in Urumiya. One Shia scholar had the chance to discuss with this young Christian teenager, and he could convert this person to Shia Islam, and his name became Muhammad Sadaq. Muhammad is a sign of his Islam, and Sadaq is his a sign of Shia Islam. In that time, this young Shia convert traveled across Iran and preached Islam to many, many Christians, and he successfully converted many Christians to Islam. He has written tens of books. Many of those books are published and many of them are not still published. And those books are in support of Islam. We have very strong arguments. We only have to extract these arguments from our resources, from our sources. The knowledge of Ahlul Bayt is a treasure that we must acquire. We must spend time, years, to learn about them. If people learn about the goodness and the words of the Holy Ahlul Bayt, it is all people, if any person, learns about the good words of the Holy Ahlul Bayt, they will follow them. This is a reality. This is a hadith from Imam Rida. Sayyid Mahdi Halli. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Sayyid Mehdi Halli was a contemporary of Sheikh Ansari. He died 19 years after Sheikh Ansari. Sayyid Mehdi Halli was a very great scholar and jurist. He was a marja. He had his, ho his own followers. He used to live in Hilla. He studied in Najaf and Karbala. And he returned to Hilla. He was a famous marja and jurist. He had followers. Dili Sheikh Ansari. Died 19 years before Sayyid Mahdi Heli. It is written that Sayyid Mahdi Heli, during his time, it is written that Said Mahdi Hilli, this great scholar, managed to convert 100,000 people to Shia Islam. There were no newspapers and social media outlets and and the facilitations and the equipments that we have today. But he managed to convert 100,000 people. And this is us. We should be ashamed of ourselves. On the Day of Judgment, we were going to face the Prophet of Islam. How can we compare ourselves to this great scholar? To improve ourselves, we should improve during the month of Ramadan. In that time, the suburban areas of Hilla were non-Shia, was resided by non-Shia people. 
And this single person managed to convert all those people to Shia Islam. He was a very scholarly character, and it was not possible if he was not a scholarly character, so you have to study as hard as you can. This month of Ramadan is a great time for preaching the message of Ahlul Bayt. The Quran emphasizes on delivering the message in a clear and obvious manner. The Turkish monarch fought against Quran. He even objected that why Quran is in Arabic, so he just gave a Turkish translation of Quran. He used to say that why God has repeated himself in the Quran, why does he say continuously in the name of God, the magnificent and merciful, why does he repeat that? He just deleted the the parts that were that were repeated and just made a very abridged version of Quran. But he did not notice the fact that repeating is what makes things change. We should be insistent. The body requires to eat every meal. We cannot say that we can eat once and we do not repeat. You should repeat this. This is the same about our souls. We should do prayers every day. We should repeat this fact. It is a remainder, reminder to us. The Quran wants us to deliver the message in a clear and convincing manner. We should preach Tawheed, Prophethood, Resurrection Day, emanate the minor principles and the major principles of Islam. We should preach the ethics and continue to do this time after time, even if it is 1,000 times, so that they can make an effect on people. Why do we repeat our religious rituals every year? It is because it leaves a greater impact on people. At the beginning of his mission, the Prophet of Islam announced to the pagans, say there is no God but Allah. And then he continued time after time at the mosque, at public places, in his private meetings, and this caused people to gradually convert to Islam. There were people who converted to Islam 20 years after the start of mission of Islam. Some people are flexible to the message of Islam, and some people are not. We should continue this, delivering this message so that, so that it finally affects people. We should repeat and continue and be consistent in our efforts to preach Islam to people. There are countless number of accusations and disrespectful remarks against the Prophet of Islam, derogatory statements against the Prophet of Islam in different languages around the world. There are thousands of media outlets, 90% of them are in control of corruption, corrupt organizations that broadcast programs against Islam and the Prophet of Islam. They try to deviate the use. On our part, we should also work as hard as we can. We should deliver the message of Islam in a clear and convincing manner to these people.
We should deliver this message in a clear way so that people are convinced of the truth of Islam. We should be consistent. We should not just give up after one time of speaking the truth. We should preach Islam at every place, at every time, to any person. And we should continue this time after time. And eventually we can make an effect, make a difference. Human beings are affected through consistency. The Holy Quran says that the Prophet of Islam is our role model. We should learn from him. The Prophet repeated his message for many, many times. We need to repeat our message, this message, to the people of the world. So long as there is corruption and darkness and deviance in this world, it is an obligatory deed to preach Islam. What was done by the Umayyad and Abbasid regimes in history has actually distorted the image of Islam in the world. We need to restore and rectify the image of Islam. And the best time to do this is the month of Ramadan. We have recently heard that some young Muslims were executed in some Islamic country only because they were participating in a protest. In Islamic countries, protests should be free as people used to protest against the Prophet of Islam and Imam Ali and they were never persecuted. This is what history has recorded. There were many uprisings and protests against, the, against Imam Ali, peace be upon him, in his time of power. And Imam Ali never persecuted the protesters. And yet Imam Ali is accused in, in the world. We should reveal the truth about Imam Ali. We should tell the world that once Imam Ali was the leader of the Muslim nations, he never persecuted the protesters against himself. He never even insulted those dissidents, although he had the power. Of course, Imam Ali used to defend against those people who held up arms. But as soon as those people laid down their weapons, even after they had waged a war and killed many people, Imam Ali used to cease fighting after they laid down their arms. Even Imam Ali did not cut their share of the treasury, did not imprison them, did not execute them. After the battle of Camel, the, battle, the battles of Camel, Nahrawan, and Safin, the Imam stopped fighting the enemies as soon as they stopped. This is how the Prophet of Islam acted. The Prophet not only did not persecute, persecute the enemies, but also showed some favors to them. It is our responsibility to reveal these facts and support and protect these two characters. In the Battle of Nahrawan, in, during the Battle of Nahrawan, some people protested against Imam Ali. They actually revolted against Imam Ali. And as you know, during a time of war, if soldiers revolt against their leader, they are immediately executed in a martial court of law. And this is a common law among all nations and cultures.
However, Imam Ali did not punish those soldiers. They revolted against Imam Ali. The Kharijites, they accused the holy Imam, their leader, of being an infidel. But Imam Ali never punished one of them. He did not imprison them or confiscate their properties. He did not execute them. We should present such a great character as Imam Ali to the world. It is said that by the whole infallibles, if Imam Ali was the immediate success, it was the immediate caliph after the Holy Prophet of Islam, people would have enjoyed the greatest prosperity ever in human history. Lady Fatima said that if people had accepted the rule of Imam Ali immediately after the Prophet of Islam, they would have experienced a great time of comfort. People would have no problems and issues at all. Today Imam Ali is not among us but his path and his message is we have the policies and the methods of Imam Ali and the Islamic countries must adhere to these policies and we Muslims should present these policies and methods of Imam Ali to the world. The best time to do this is the month of Ramadan. It is a responsibility. It is a religious obligation on all Muslims. I hope God Almighty, by the grace of the Holy Infallibles, makes us successful in this path. And I hope that we all are the subject of the special attentions of the Holy Promised Savior, Imam al-Mahdi. May God hasten his advent. I hope that we all, the youth, the cultured people, all Muslim individuals can make a perfect time of this month of Ramadan in this year. May God bless Muhammad and his pure household.